Hello everyone. Hello, welcome to South Mountain YMCA Camp's online classes. Uh, my name is Becky and today we're going to be talking about salamanders and hunting them, seeing if we can find any. Um, so let me know if you can see me, let me know if you can hear me. We are in a bit of a different location than we usually are. We're not inside. We are actually at Peakside. We're at our spring house um, on Peakside. So let me see if I can show you guys a little bit. So this is our spring house on Peakside. It's hidden away here on uh, Peakside. It's hard to find if you don't know where to look. Um, but it's actually a little bit of history. It was actually part of the old Cameron estate. So this is the water that they used to feed their, man their mansion, their uh, an orchard and everything. Uh, but right now it's just, you know, kind of going back to nature a little bit. It's really, really cool. The water that you can kind of hear in the background a little bit, that's spring fed water. It's coming from our little mountain. So it's super fresh, super cold. Because we're at the highest peak, of course, there's not really anything around us. You know, there's not any pollution. So it's really, really clean water in there, um, which makes a great ecosystem and makes it home to a lot of really cool creatures, um, including salamanders. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So before we dive in, pun intended, to our salamander hunt, we're going to talk a little bit about amphibians because in our past videos, if you've seen my turtle videos and my snake videos, those are reptiles, okay? So there's different classes of animals, reptiles, mammals, birds, and amphibians. So Though reptiles and amphibians, they do have similarities. There's like kind of a Venn diagram. There's there are a couple of things that are the same for both uh, classes. Amphibians do have their own characteristics that make them strictly amphibians. So we're going to talk a little bit about that before we dive into this lovely cold spring behind me. Um, so like I said, amphibians. Now the word amphibian actually means two lives, okay? Two lives. And that's referring to the fact that amphibians are have a life in the water and one on land. So most salamanders and most amphibians, they start off in the water and then they have they go through a metamorphosis, which is a, a change, a transformation. Um, and then they're able to be on land and they have their second life on land. Okay, so when they um, are in eggs, they, so all of our amphibians, they start off, well, I'll say most of our amphibians start off as eggs, okay? Little jelly, little eggs with a little dot in the middle, that's the little larva. And the little larva eats through it and then they are just a body and a little bit of a tail. And that's the, lar the larva kind of stage, the first beginning stage of it. Um, as they start to morph, they get legs. Now, it's really important to know that they have lungs, okay? So at this beginning stage, they have lungs. They live strictly in the water. Okay, they get, they get their oxygen from the water just kind of like, just like fish do. Um, and then they start to get legs and their tail gets a little bit longer. Their body starts to form. Their body gets a little bit longer. Some salamanders start to lose, a, uh, they start to develop lungs so that they can breathe on land. Other salamanders don't. Some salamanders never develop lungs. They always need to be in the water. But, uh, and amphibians in general. Amphibians in general start to develop lungs so that they can leave the water. It's very, very cool. Um, and then later they ch their bodies change completely and then they have their legs, they have their lungs, and they can walk out of the water on land. It's awesome. It's so cool that that's what they do. That's just a normal thing for this creature to start off in this little egg form in the water and when it fully grows, it's a complete, it looks like a completely different creature. Amphibians are really the only type of class animal that that really happens to um, outside of a womb, if that makes sense. Okay, so amphibians are cold-blooded. So that is one of the characteristics that are the same as reptiles. So cold-blooded ectothermic, we talked about that before in past videos, meaning that they get their temperature, they regulate their body temperature from the world around them, okay? So this water, as I mentioned, is, is really cold because it's coming from a spring. So only a certain type of salamander or amphibians you're going to find in this colder water. Um, it also takes it's May now, so it's late, well, sorry, it's June now, so it's warmer, so we're actually seeing a lot more activity. This, uh, 
this spring doesn't really become active with amphibians until mid to late May because it's so cold and they really need that sun to really heat it up and everything. So if they must, if they have to cool off or if they have to warm up, they have to use their surroundings because they're cold blooded. Okay. So types of amphibians, frogs, um, short little bodies, they got webbed fingers and toes. They got those long, strong, powerful legs so they can jump really, really far. And toads are also a type of frog. Okay, a lot of times people think that toads and frogs are different, type, uh, different types of uh, amphibians, but they're not. They're, they're just a different type of species. So toads, frogs, one type. Then we have our salamanders. So salamanders, they look kind of like lizards. If you haven't seen a salamander before, don't worry, you will today. Um, so long little bodies with usually short little legs um, that stick straight out. And their fingers, um, toes, fingers, whatever you wanna call them, are also usually webbed. Some of them aren't, and some of them have like little pointy claw type, type toes so that they can dig in the mud. And um, another thing that you might hear me talk about today are newts. Newts are a type of salamander. The real difference between newts and salamanders are the their skin, really. Uh, newts have a bit of a rougher skin texture. Newts usually uh, spend most of their time in the water, whereas salamanders usually, you know, they, they come out of the water. But usually you find newts in the water. Um, and so, so, new so we have frogs slash toads, salamanders slash newts. And then we have, this is gonna sound like a weird word, you might not know this word, C-cilians, C-cilians, okay? So it's, it's a harder word to say, it's even harder to spell, it's got a lot of consonants in it, but C-cilians. And C-cilians are basically a cross between if you took like a snake and a worm and pushed them together, that's what they look like, okay? So they are a worm that basically has eyes and a mouth that you can see. Um, and they can, they can get really big in some countries. They can get to be like four feet long. Um, we have, we do have them here, but they're not as common. Um, and they have like a really strong, they have a really pointed nose and a skull and a really strong skull. And they use that pointed nose to basically dig. They just dig with that nose, um, through the dirt and the mud. So those are the three types of amphibians. Okay. So, uh, toads and frogs or frogs and toads, salamanders, newts and then Sicilians, okay? Those are the three types of amphibians. But today, we're gonna to be talking about our salamanders, okay? And they're awesome, they're so cool. Now, all amphibians, they need to live, you know, near water, basically. They need to live near moisture, okay? So, but they've adapted to live in like a number of different types of habitats, uh, uh, habitats including streams, forest, uh, Meadows that have like a lot of dew, uh, bogs, swamps, ponds, rainforests, tons and rainforests, lakes. Um, but most of them, as I said, they lit, like to live near or in water or damp areas. Okay, so that's where you're going to find, that's where you're going to be the most successful when you're hunting your amphibians. Okay, or looking for, searching for your amphibians. Okay, now am most amphibians are carnivores, actually, all. Uh, when they're adults, they're all carnivore, all carnivores and predators, and they eat a variety of food from spiders, beetles, worms, basically anything that can fit in their mouth, they're gonna eat. Um, as we know, frogs have that long tongue that like, kind of, like can uh, spit out and sticky, and it can grab stuff. Uh, salamanders, not so much. They, they, some salamanders do have teeth, but other salamanders don't have teeth, and they just kind of just eat bugs and things like that that they can catch so very cool so that's all i'm going to talk about like in general about amphibians let's get into our salamanders okay so there are like approximately i looked up like 500 different species of salamanders there are so many different types of salamanders um or maybe 200 yeah 200 200, sorry about, about that, 200 different types of species of salamanders alone, 500 different types of species of amphibians. But they typically, um, here there's, the Americas have the highest populations of different species of salamanders. And that's just because we have the most beautiful landscape for them and ecosystems for them to live in. We have this area of ecosystems that are wet, we have all these wetlands 
uh, especially in Central America and rainforests and those types of things. So we have a lot of uh, locations that you can find salamanders. So salamanders, like I said, live near water, our cool little ear, and they also live in the mud under rocks. So to go on a salamander hunt, we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna go on our salamander hunt. You need, what do you need to go on a salamander hunt? First off, you need something that you're gonna catch the salamanders with. You don't really wanna use your hands to catch salamanders. And why is that? Because salamanders actually breathe, like a lot of amphibians, they breathe through their skin. Their skin is very porous. So when they're in there, especially when they're in their phase where they're in the water all the time, they're breathing through their skin. Their gills are really kind of using their skin to breathe. Uh, so if you have any type of oil, like harsh chemicals or bad oils on your hands or anything like that, they're gonna get that in their skin. Also, if your hand is dry and you put a creature that needs to be in water to breathe on your hand, it's not gonna be able to breathe. So anytime you're holding a salamander, make sure that you have water in your hand. So you have a little pool of water in your hand so you can hold, and you're just gonna hold it for a little while, and then you're gonna put it back into the container that you're keeping it in for a little while. So. You need containers, you need something to put them in, okay? Um, and this is a fine container, it's, it's perfect, but the only issue with it right now is that it's empty. When you have a container and you're gonna put your salamander in it, and again, we're not keeping the salamander, we're just looking at it for a little while. Amphibians in general don't make great pets. You can't really hold them, you definitely can't cuddle them, and they're a lot to take care of because it's really hard to imitate what nature is already doing for them okay so you want to get you guys can kind of see that i almost spilled there's water in there so i'm going to turn you guys down a little bit so on this there's just some moss a little bit of water in there you, you want to have basically their little habitat in here so take stuff from the habitat that you're, you're finding them in oops sorry about that take take stuff from the habitat that you're finding them in and you're going to put that in your little specimen container. And that's where you're gonna keep your salamanders in, that's what you're gonna look at your salamanders in, and then when you're done, you're just gonna put them back where you found them. Now, to catch a salamander, like I said, you don't wanna use your hands, you can use nets. Any type of net really will do. Um, remember, they're sometimes buried in the water, so you might want a stronger net, but I use this net, and I was pretty successful with it. This is just a regular net that you can use for uh, a fish tank. Um, now, they are kind of bendable, a little bendy, so you have to be careful with it. You don't want to scoop up too much, but you know, this is a perfectly fine net. Or if you have maybe a little bit stronger of a net, this has like a thicker handle on it, a little bit st sturdier of a netting, you can use that. Now, if you don't have a net at home, that's okay. You can make your own net. Really, all you need is a thin piece of fabric, whether it's a bandana, an old t-shirt, something like that. Take two sticks, tie it across those two sticks, and you just hold the two stick ends and you can scoop up with the sticks and the and the fabric. Super easy. Um, it's, you know, it doesn't work as perfectly as a net, but it, it'll get the job done. You'll find some stuff with it, okay? Um, I'll drop a couple of links below on how to make your own net at home because there's no need to go buy a net. You have the stuff at home if you have the location that you're looking for. Now, speaking of location, I'm gonna lift you guys up a little bit. You see here, our spring house, there's this little pooling of water right behind me. Now, that I'm going to be digging in to try to find some salamanders, okay? Um, it's very, it's, it's pretty shallow, but it's really, it's pretty shallow with water, but very deep with mud. It's about like a foot deep with just muck and mud. And that's what, especially this particular type of salamander that we have here on camp, loves. It absolutely loves it because it burrows in there, it feels safe, and then once it's deep enough, it actually retains a lot of heat down there because it's below that frost line, below that freezing point and everything, so it stays, rel stays relatively warm. So I'm going to turn you guys around real quick. There we go. Look at the pretty forest. It's absolutely beautiful up here now that it just rained. And we're going to spin around towards our spring house. And I'm going to point you guys down at our lovely little watering hole. Now, the reason why you want a net is because you are going to have to scoop through and you're going to shift 
sifting through the mud that you pick up. Now, we're probably gonna find in here, my hope is that we're gonna find, of course, another salamander. Um, if we don't, that's okay. I have one in waiting for us. There you go, you guys can see that. And here is our net. But we also might find a couple other creatures. This is an awesome little ecosystem. Um, there's definitely a lot of frogs um, that I saw jumping in here. Um, not so much toads, toads don't, toads don't like swimming, but there's also some crayfish that we might find, so that'll be really cool. So, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your net and you're gonna go in and you're just gonna kinda dig down a little bit into that little muck and you're gonna pick up some of that mud. See that mud at the bottom? Give it a couple of dunks, a couple of dunks in the water to kinda sift through it. And then we're gonna lift it up. Actually gonna use our hands to kinda search through it a little bit and see if we found anything, see if we got anything in that first scoop. You're gonna get messy with this. I'll be honest with you. The reason is because, you know, they like to live in this muddy area. Now I'm not seeing any right now in that first Let's try. So don't find that. You're just gonna put it back into the water Try not to put it right because we're going to try a different location. We're going to try over here a little bit. So again, you're going to scoop. Oh, I definitely got something that time. I think I saw a, craw, a crawfish or a crayfish, however you say it. It's a couple of different ways that you can say it. Yeah, I definitely did. I'll show you guys in a second. Let me just, so we're going to dunk it a couple of times, sift through it. That's why it's nice to have a net that has like bigger holes in it because all the big, the, all the small stuff gets out of the way. And up, oh, we did get a There he is, you guys see him? Little crawfish. Now crawfish, um, I know they're not salamanders. We'll get back to salamanders in a second. But crawfish are really cool because they're just like mini lobsters. That's what the lobsters, they're very territorial. If I would put my finger right in front of him, he would like, oh, sorry buddy. He would like just like go at it. They're, you know, they don't know how small they are. Um, but they're very, very cool. Now in these colder waters, they're, they, they might get a little bit bigger. They can get like, you know, oh, wait a second. We do have a salamander. Come here, buddy. Oh, look at that guys. Now my hand's not super, super wet, but look at that. There he is. We're going to put him on our specimen thing and we're going to find, we're going to talk about him in just a second. There you go, buddy. Awesome. Thing. Crawfish, we'll get back to that salamander in a second. Crawfish, um, they're going to be, he's going to get about this big, this wide, so it's about two to three inches long. Down south, they get bigger because it's warmer water, um, and that's, and you can eat them. Anything eats crawfish. Basically, anything that can put its mouth on a crawfish uh, can eat a crawfish. Now, let's talk about our salamander find. Whoo, I'm so excited we found one. That's awesome. So, we put him into our little container here. And I wanna make sure that, you know, again, I wanna make sure my hand is nice and wet when I hold him. There we go. So let's get him out. Where are you, buddy? Now, salamanders, we mentioned have short little legs, but they have this really long tail, which makes them really, really good swimmers. Can you see them, guys? I'll try to get them out of there. Come here, buddy. Now, some salamanders, like I mentioned, they do have teeth. Um, some salamanders are poisonous, actually. We don't have any poisonous ones here in Pennsylvania. There he is. But they are very, very slippery. Come back. There you are. Let's see if we can get them to be up there, there he is. So you guys can see him right there, perfect. I'm looking at him to see if I can decide what type of salamander. It's a little bit hard, he's small, so he is a juvenile salamander, so it's harder to tell what type they are because they're all really this kind of grayish dark color when they are still in the water, when they're, when they're these youths, when they're, they're juvenile salamanders because they blend in the best. See how well he blends in if that to that water if he was to go in there? But 
with my best guess, because the most types of salamanders that we have here at the spring house are actually northern spring salamanders. These salamanders are actually lungless sla salamanders. So I mentioned before that salaman some salamanders don't grow lungs. They just breathe through their skin the whole time. That's what type this is, I'm pretty sure. I definitely have another one. I think this is a pretty young one. Um, oh, actually, guys, I just got a better look at him. He is a mud puppy. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. Mud puppies also are lungless, but the big difference is that they have these like little tendrils that are around their ears, and they get pretty big, guys. They can get really, really big. So I'm going to try to see if we can see him a little bit better for you guys so you can really, really get a good look at him. So I'm going to pull him away from the thing so you guys can look down at the water for a second while I catch our salamander friend. Now, I'm not a salamander expert by any means, but I am pretty enthusiastic about them. So when I'm trying to like figure out what type of salamander it is, it, you really have to look at a lot of different factors. Not only the size of it, now this one is definitely a young one, so it's harder to tell what type he is. But because of his little wings that I hope I can show you guys here. There you go, buddy. You're okay. There he is. So, I'll show you guys. There you go. So you see him? There's our little salamander. And you can kind of see his little wings by him. So, he's going to get to be pretty big. He's going to get to be probably, he could get five, five inches long. Um, now he probably won't stay in this area. He'll probably go down into the stream a little bit more, but he might stay in here for a little while. He or she, it's really hard to tell. Come back, little bud. They do move really fast on land. So I make sure that he can breathe a little bit. So I'm going to put some water in my hand. There he is again. So you can see that he has eyes, that he has these little tiny feet and that he has this coloring and his tail is actually flat and that's so he can swim a lot better. But I want him to like kind of put up his little ears a little bit for you guys. It's hard to see him. But yeah, so that's our little salamander friend. Very, very cute. Now, salamanders, I'm gonna put him back in our little specimen container. And I'm gonna show you guys our other little guy. Now, salamanders, a couple of fun facts, are nocturnal. So. The reason why we're finding them so easily here is they're kind of actually sleeping um, and that's why they're not moving very fast. It's why it's kind of easy to track them down this time of day because they're not moving super, super fast. Now, I'm going to show you guys our other little salamander friend that I found. This one is our northern spring one and I'll show you why. I'm going to turn you guys over here. So this is my little specimen thing that I found that I made up earlier. Now you see how I put a lot of grass in there. I put a lot of moss in here. And our other little friend, oh, there he is, is right here. Now this is our northern. My hands are wet, so he's nice right there. This is our northern spring salamander. You see how what a bright color he is and he's all speckled and everything but when he first came out he was about the same color as our other little guy I'm gonna make sure he can breathe Put some water in my hand there he is so he's gonna get this is still a juvenile there's st he's still pretty small he's still pretty young he's gonna get to be a brighter orange he's a pretty color orange right now but he's gonna get even brighter as he gets older a little maybe even a little bit darker and a reddish color whoops right back in the water so you can see that he has this flat little tail and that his little, come here little guy, and that his underbelly is lighter. Come here little guy, you're okay. Now I'm being really gentle with them. I don't want to squeeze him at all. I don't want to like, you know, hurt him because they are very, very fragile. There we go, we can see him right there right back into the water. Now, another cool thing about our salamanders is that they can grow back their legs. And that's all because if he got his little arm bitten off or something, his arm will grow back. There he is again, there he is. 
And same thing with his tail. There you go. Hi, little guy. Very, very cool. So these are the type of salamander that we find here most often. And he's very, very, they're very bright colored. But the reason why, and you're going to ask, well, why aren't they camouflaged like the rest of them? If you actually look into the water over here, you can see that there are some bright colors in there. And that's because of the rocks. The rocks in this area have an iron deposits in them. So they do turn that orangey color. So he is camouflaged. He is camouflaged against those rocks. And when you're in, and when he's in mud, nothing can see him anyway. But when he's on the stones and crossing over those rocks, that way he can be protected because he blends right in. There you go, buddy. Come on back out. Awesome. Very, very cool. Now, like I said, some salamanders are poisonous. Now, when I say poisonous, they're not venomous. That means they can't bite you and make you sick. But all amphibians actually give off this type of secretion. So if you pick up a toad or a frog and you feel that your hands are suddenly getting wet, they didn't pee on you, actually. They, what they did was they're releasing this liquid that does not taste good. So if you were to eat them, if you were an animal that wanted to eat them, you'd be like, ugh, this is horrible, and you would drop them because that's what they're giving off. And so salamanders do the same thing. Come back out, buddy. There you are. You see how they move? They kind of move like snakes. They're, they're, their legs help them a little bit when they're crawling over top of things, but when they're in the water, they just kind of wiggle their long, long tail and they get out of here. Now, the largest salamander in the world is a Chinese giant salamander. It can get to be five feet long. Our, lo our longest salamander here that we have is probably a mud puppy, and it can get to be about six, seven inches, maybe possibly eight inches long. Um, they are very cool looking creatures, but they, they don't get much bigger than that. We don't, we just don't have the space and we don't have the, the warm months for them to get that big. All of our salamanders really only come out between April into September. And then once it gets really cold, they burrow back under into the mud and they kind of go into this brumation. It's not hibernation, it's brumation. Everything slows down because they are ectothermic. There he goes again. There he is. Woo. Cool. So the name salamander, it's really, it actually comes from a Greek word and it means fire lizard. Okay. Now it's not because they have these bright colors to them, even though a lot of salamanders are really, really bright colors. It's actually because when they were first seen salamanders, when people would throw logs onto fire, salamanders would scurry out of them. Um, because obviously their homes were on fire, so they had to get out of there. So pe people called them fire lizards, thinking that they were a type of lizard, um, which we've learned they are not. But, you know, and they came out of these logs that were burning. So that's how they got the name salamander. Now, like I said, salamanders are capable of regenerating their lost limbs. It takes, actually, it takes a few weeks to do it, though. So, but... That's relatively fast considering, but it is one of their defenses, that along with their toxins, and, it's, and the fact that they're really, really slippery. Now, salamanders usually live near water, like all amphibians do, and they find shelter in like the ground, um, under rocks, uh, in brooks, creeks, ponds, and other locations that have a lot of rain and a lot of rocks to hide under. Um, some pe so this species right here, though he is out of the water right now, um, is mostly aquatic. He's aquatic his whole life. He's not going to leave this little area or anything like that. Um, some species are, are not. Some species actually are, their eggs are on these like tall grasses right here. They would put their eggs right next to the water on these tall grasses and they would, there's a lot of birds are happening around me right now. And they would be on the land for a majority of their life. So those are the types of animals that you would find maybe in your backyard if you picked up uh, our red spotted salamander you would find. Um, a rock or something, you don't have to have a creek, you just have to have a lot of moisture and everything. Cool. 
Awesome, so these are our salamander friends. Now there's a lot more that we could tell you guys about amphibians, but salamanders, when you guys go out, but one thing I wanna leave you guys with, as we look at our little friend right here, there you go, bud, is the reason why we have so many salamanders here up at camp is because the spring house is really, really fresh water. Salamanders and amphibians require perfect water, basically. They cannot survive with any types of pollutants. It's a really good sign if you have salamanders in your backyard or in your little pot or in a pond near your house or anything like that, because that means there's not really any pollutants in that water. They can live in there. Um, it's why we're losing a lot of salamanders because a lot of times our ponds, our rivers, our streams are getting polluted. So if you do find any amphibians, if you see any amphibians, know that that's a good sign. Know that that means you have a really healthy ecosystem and there's no trash or bad things in that water. So that's why they live so well in there. So next time when you see a little salamander or you go on your own little salamander hunt, remember the key things. You don't really wanna handle them that much. You know, not only does it stress the animal out, as much as this animal can be stressed out, their brains are not that big, but you know, it stresses the animal out, but also they might not be able to breathe because considering what type of salamander they are, they might breathe through their skin and they need water to breathe through it. Though they can hold their breath for a really long time, we don't want to challenge them and we don't want to stress out their little bodies any more than that. Finally, if you see any trash in any type of waterways or if any trash goes into our drainage systems or anything like that, try to get pick up the trash because all the trash that is on the ground will eventually make it into our waterways and that means that we won't have these really cool amphibians to hang out with and see and study and look at. So for my little spotted friend here, we're actually going to put him back in the water and you guys can watch me release him. Come on, little buddy. I'm going to get you back in there. There you are. He is slippery. There it is. So, we're gonna put him, whoops, right back in the water. There he is. See a little, it's a little, he's right there. Up, oh, he burrowed himself in. Awesome. Okay, guys. Well, guys, thanks for coming um, and thanks for joining us on this live. Uh, I had a lot of fun getting in the mud here and finding you guys some salamanders. Get outside, guys. It's beautiful out. Get outside. Find some salamanders. Find some frogs. Find some turtles. Find some snakes. Look at those animals. Take pictures of them. Remember, though, keep the wild in the wild, and we'll see you guys next time here um, at our South Mountain YMCA online classes. Check out any of our other videos on our Camp From Home page and our YouTube page. So thanks, guys. Stay safe. Stay well.